Hello, this is Demon Phoenix with another Witch 3 video. I have reached level 100 in my new game plus uh, playthrough for the one I've been doing through the walkthrough where I've got level 100 Witcher gear and so I can get back to doing a couple of build videos and this is one I've been wanting to do for a long time and this is uh, somebody called Sujiren's build. So Sujiren is from Reddit and he posted a really detailed post about a conductors of magic in game sign build which is very interesting because signs are useless in new game plus. Or are they? So the thing I was thinking about Conductors of Magic is it adds a set amount of damage and uh, I thought that wasn't very much use but I'll show you why it is late in just a little later in the video thanks to Shujiren's build. So we've got Preservation on the Grandmaster Legendary Griffin Steel Sword and then Greater Velo's Runes on the Legendary Griffin Silver Sword and the reason that we're using the full Griffin gear is so that we can have the 6 out of 6 bonuses. <laughs> So the stamina one where you can um, cast regular signs twice is one of the best Grandmaster set bonuses and so is the other one. So the 6 set bonus is Erden Traps is increased by 40% whilst you stood in the Erden Trap. Stamina regeneration is increased, so is sign intensity by 100% and damage is reduced by 20%. So it's a really excellent buff and so we're using those and then in the other parts of the gear uh, we've just got Igni sign intensity greater sign intensity runes for Igni because this build is all about doing damage with Quen when it explodes and with Igni when we cast it. Now the main potions that Sujiren recommends for this build are Thunderbolt, Superior Torneal and Superior Petrish Filter. So it'll buff your damage a little bit, buff the sign intensity as much as possible and this is where Conductor of Magic comes into play. So uh, we've got a couple of the combat skills there and we're going to put those in the middle because we want as many blue skills boosting sign intensity as possible. So we've got Strength Training, Crushing Blows to increase the strong attack damage, Sunder Armor to reduce the enemy resistance by 25% and Razor Focus so it can build Adrenaline and start off each combat new combat with an Adrenaline Point as well. Uh, so it gets as much as possible. The vast majority of the build is built around these signs and this is what you're going to see here. So we've got active shield for Quen which is extremely important because that's the main part of healing. Uh, we've got fire stream, melt armor and igni sign intensity. We've got sustained glyphs uh, so that we and magic trap so we can cast magic trap and so that the Erden trap lasts as long as possible because when we stood in it we get that 100% sign intensity boost so you want that at all times. Then we've got Exploding Shield, Active Shield, which is really important because that's the main way of healing with the build. It's a very effective way of doing so. And then Quen Discharge at the bottom, which reflects some of the damage. And now that only works against certain enemies, but I'm going to link to some of Sujiren's posts so that you can read about the build in full. And we've got a lot of 25 points piled into the uh, Alchemy Tree, even though the only Alchemy skill is Synergy. But Synergy adds such a massive boost that it's still worth using. And then Griffin School Techniques, which is obviously pretty much mandatory on any sign build, especially with Medium Armor. And that boosts the stamina regeneration and also the sound intensity by 5% uh, per piece of gear. So what happens is, uh, is that you want to be using the silver sword instead of the steel sword for the ma vast majority of the time because of the higher damage and how conductors of magic works. And you can see there that it, uh, the 350% sound intensity and okay damage. It's not a build that's about damage, although it can do a little bit with the heavy attacks um, with the skills that we've got there. And I'll show exactly how the build works at the minute. Now one of the uh, things that you do want to take into account, which I didn't actually know, and again, Suzuren pointed out to me, uh, is that Adrenaline Points, even though they are only uh, they usually just add 10% uh, attack damage, they also do add 5% sign intensity for each Adrenaline Point. So you can see they're using Marigold Forest and the Superior White Honey um, trick to use the Marigold Forest and then boost up to 3 Adrenaline, that adds another 15% sign intensity there. Now the main bulk of the damage with this build comes from Conductors of Magic adding the damage from your sword as sign damage. Now the reason that I didn't think this was that good is that 2000 or 1000 or so damage uh, added from your sword isn't really that much late game. I mean what's the point? You can just kill everything with Euphoria. So I've written Conductors of Magic off, there's no point having this build. Sujiren said that he was getting like 4000 damage per Igni against some enemies and I was saying that's not possible. How can you do that on Death March, which this clearly is. But the way it works is that you have the manual sword switch and you keep your silver sword out which does more damage. You always want to be stood in an Erden trap which I'm just going to show here. When I cast an Erden and it gives the 100% boost from the 6 set Grandmaster Griffin gear. Boost the sign intensity up there, so there it's 430% and that's with having the sword drawn and the Greater Vela's runestone, so the 40% from the sword that the Griffin sword adds anyway, and then the 15% extra from having three Greater Vela's runestones. Then you stand in the 
Erden Trap and it gives another 100%. And what that does is the damage from the sword from Conductor's Magic is actually scaled up by the sign intensity. So if you have a full sign build with the four blue mutagens, and they are all boosted by having as many signed uh, abilities as possible to bolster the increase that those greater blue mutagens give. All of that translates into extra damage on your Quen and Igni. So when you stood in the Erden Trap here, you can see this is how it works. You have really high sign and uh, stamina regeneration and Igni still applies the burn, but you can see that when Igni actually hits, it also does a massive amount of damage and you can cast it twice. So it very quickly does a couple of uh, thousand points of damage every time you double cast it and it's extremely effective on enemies. Uh, there are only some enemies that it doesn't really work for. Now it's a very glass cannon kind of build, but it adds a lot of fun to the actual playing of the game so you've got to get good at being dexterous with your use of the signs you have to actually pay attention to what you're doing instead of just whirling the hell out of everything and it's an end game new game it's an end game new game plus sign build which is quite interesting if you wanted to play something a little bit different and you like me you get frustrated with the fact that piercing cold stops working properly because ard won't knock anybody down after about level 70. so yeah uh, it's an interesting build and uh, it took me a bit of getting to grips with to mess around with using the quick switching for the signs and keeping everything fluid and uh, you can see here that a hand space is going to be one of the more difficult things that you can take on because there are so many enemies and they do do so much damage. You also need, uh, need to be paying a little bit of attention to what you're doing, uh, which like I say is one of the fun and slightly challenging things about the build. If you're a little bit um, fed up of doing just combat alchemy or you want something that's a bit of a challenge and quite different. Now the uh, Grandmaster Griffin armor, we also have an eruption on it. Now eruption is a level three enchantment and you can see that when enemies die uh, from being hit directly by Igni, they will explode and that's really fun as well. Um, so you just have to be paying attention to what you're doing. It takes a good little bit of skill. You've got to remember to keep Quen up. You have to use active shield to be healing up when you're doing that. And uh, you can make good use of your parries against human enemies and things like that. And the other thing is you also have to be paying attention to your potion use. So again, uh, the main ones that Suzuren recommends are the Superior Tony Owl, uh, Superior Petri and the Superior Thunderbolt. And you can see here that even though I'm doing quite well in this combat and I'm trying to uh, keep the Erden sign up and stay in the trap. I am taking a few uh, hits there and I do uh, not, I've not reapplied the potion so you've got to remember to doing that when you're using this build. The superior tawny in particular is very useful for adding that extra uh, stamina regeneration. But Quen does a ton of damage when it explodes and uh, one of the interesting things is you've got fire stream for shield enemies but also if you can get someone to explode from eruption it'll do damage and set fire to them as well. So it's a good really fun little build. And I'm going to link to Sujiren's post because he explains it all in full, uh, the skills that he has and which ones are expendable. Now Melt Armor uh, doesn't make a huge amount of difference and isn't really that useful. Uh, it sounds a lot better than it is but it's a tier 1 skill for a reason. And even though the Quen Discharge is a very uh, late skill, it's at the end, it only affects certain enemies so it doesn't work against every enemy. But if you can fit it on the build, uh, it is still worth having. You can see here against Kikimos, uh, the, uh, we've got, I'm just going to show a different type of enemies and uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Now the Griffin gear with it being Grandmaster uh, does actually have some pretty decent uh, monster resistances. It's not bad resistances at all, it just doesn't have good bludgeoning resistances so you have to be very careful against club wielding enemies and ones that do bludgeoning damage but you can see it still applies burn eruption is tons of fun when it's exploding and you can very quickly double cast igni and get your stamina regeneration back and be able to do a ton of damage with the igni casting it also has all the tools that you would need to fight different types of enemies so we've got magic trap and obviously you want to be stood in a normal urdan trap as often as possible now if you eruption is fun but it's not absolutely mandatory in my opinion i mean you may disagree uh, i hope not but anyway uh you can also use entanglement and entanglement's quite fun and if you keep your magic trap up with entanglement uh, then it will keep casting the erden traps for you when magic trap hits an enemy it puts an erden sign there uh, so that's quite fun you see here i'm fighting a couple of uh vampires uh, you'll very rarely get blinded by some enemies in the game like you saw just there and that stops using the active shield so you've got to be on point with your dodging if you're doing that uh, but you can see even the vampires they take even though they're doing huge damage to me they're also taking enormous damage and the stamina regeneration is so quick that you can use active shield to get that health back but one of the things that is really good is that if you use superior tawny owl after 6 p.m it'll last until 6 a.m and you can let the toxicity die off and use the superior blizzard you can see there that you get the slowdown when you kill something using superior blizzard and if you have three adrenaline points it also lets you cast um 
signs but no adrenaline cost so if the toxicity has died off from superior tornado or you feel you don't need superior thunderbolt for that particular fight superior blizzard is excellent with this build as well now Sujiren's uh, red skills that he recommends are like we say the strength training crushing blows but I actually think there are slightly better options or at least ones that I prefer. Now golems are a problem uh, for this build relatively speaking because you can see there they have such massive magic resistance uh, that they don't really take a lot of damage uh, but if you can get them uh, when it's raining with superior thunderbolt here you can always do crits. Now that was the version with the normal skills, but this is what I actually prefer, is swapping one of the red skills, uh, probably strength training, because 20% is not a massive boost if you don't have a lot of damage anyway. 20% uh, damage isn't a massive boost, and I prefer rend. And even though uh, this is always doing critical hits in this particular clip, because again, it's using superior thunderbolt whilst it's raining, which gives 100% critical hit rate. But rend raises your critical hit rate for when you're using rend by 50% anyway, so it virtually always crits. And it's very useful because you can very quickly get in a lot of hits and it's more effective in my opinion than just using the um, normal red skills with normal things with normal strikes now you can see there that fire streams also relatively effective against the golems much more than normal signs so personally i like having rend now there are other options for this build uh, everything i've shown so far apart from that rend portion there is exactly as suzuren has it set up in his very detailed and excellent post but uh, this is what I'm just going to show a couple of the other things that I've been messing about with and things that uh, you could add on to the build potentially. And one of them is my personal favorite, obviously, is skill switching, which uh, is uh, one of my own discoveries where you can apply acquired tolerance and you'll need the points to get down to synergy anyway. So you'll already have acquired tolerance with no extra points. Uh, and I've just put a point in fast metabolism there as well. So this is using what I was talking about before. From 6 p.m. you can uh, onwards you can use superior tony owl, have the toxicity die off because you've just temporarily equipped fast metabolism. Superior tony owl then acts like a decoction and it will last the entire evening until 6 a.m. So you can have superior tony owl, use fast metabolism to let the toxicity completely die off to zero, and then apply the decoctions using skill switching. And you can put four decoctions on with the um, acquired tolerance and metabolic control and then take them out so that's really useful you can apply things like the arch griffin decoction or the ancient lesson decoction now this is the four slot glitch and depending on how you feel about glitches with this particular one i would always use this glitch with this build now you, uh, there is another one of my videos that i'll put a link to the description which shows you how to use this and the reason that i would say you could use this build is i would much prefer to have the synergy ability uh, in that fourth strength and synapse slot and use the glitch to put it there and then just have three red abilities and the reason i would do that is because i really think that conductors of magic should be the one of the end end um mutations like metamorphosis or second life where you can equip any of the colors uh, because there aren't any uh, signs mutations that let you equip the synergy or green skills in the central block which is daft because you want to be able to boost the greater blue mutagens so i would recommend putting synergy in that fourth slot just having rend crushing blows and razor focus as the three red skills now, if you're going to do that that frees up a slot on the outside as it was and you can use focus if you wanted from the general screen uh, tree which when you have um three adrenaline points would add an extra 30 percent sign intensity further boosting the conductors of magic what you can also do is you, there are three options from the green tree which i really love um, for this build and one of them is there is to just have acquired tolerance actually slotted and you can use a decoction and then the potions on top of it something like water hag or ancient lesion which is very useful but the absolute best ones uh, in my opinion would be to put um the delayed recovery skill there which lets you use all of the potions and as long as you keep the toxicity um, topped up you can have superior swallow superior golden oriole superior petri superior tawny owl superior thunderbolt and superior blizzard and as long as you keep the toxicity over 70 by repeatedly using potions all of those would be active at once and this is really good fun now you can see here before i was talking about using the silver sword and uh, you can just keep the silver sword because it has higher damage than the steel sword but with this particular version this is with me having synergy in the fourth uh, strength and synapses slot using the glitch and then having delayed recovery slotted and all of the potions you can see are active all at once and that means that blizzard's active and i also have rend as one of the red skills 
instead of the originally recommended ones. So I have Rend, Crushing Blows and Razor Focus. And what this does is it means I can use the Steel Sword and I can use Rend and have a little bit better mix instead of it being pure signs. So you can play it whichever of those ways you prefer. But I can make it, uh, instead of just being pure signs, every time somebody explodes with Eruption and they die, it will cause the slowdown because Superior Blizzard, even though it doesn't normally last very long, will always last with indefinitely with delayed recovery. And it makes big encounters like this a ton of fun. Because we're using the Steel Sword instead of the Silver Sword, it'll also let you use Rend if you want and uh, just balance it out a little bit. And uh, just overall, it's a really fun, extremely well put together build by Suzuren. And those are my own little recommendations for it. So I hope he thinks I've done his build justice. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. And thank you very much. Please like and subscribe.